This year, we started with two units, as we do every year. But as we started to go on over the course of the year, we realized that we weren't going to finish on time. So we started a third unit. We've always had dragon and wolf units. This year, we added a White Walker unit. It was hard enough trying to keep track of things going on in two different places at once. But in three different places at once, it becomes almost impossible. December 7th, all three units were shooting at the Paint Hall in Belfast, which is our home base. That's where we started everything with the pilot. When we have three full units going all within the same two building complex, that's a, a real challenge for everybody involved. We've never had three units shooting there concurrently. We try not to have even two units shooting there, but just uh, for whatever circumstances, it was impossible to avoid. Every department and every crew member rose to the challenge. My name is Alison Wershey and I'm the second second assistant director on Dragon Unit. Today we're at the Paint Hall. Um, it's going to be a really interesting day because we've got three units filming here. So we're going to be tripping over each other <laughs> quite shortly. My name is Paul Morris and I'm the second AD on episodes nine and ten. Our prime function on a daily basis is to get the artists, the extras, everything that goes in front of camera basically ready in time for the unit call. Today it's an eight o'clock unit call and because there's a very large prosthetic it involved starting makeup at three o'clock in the morning. Or well, 3.30 actually, but who's counting? We have a big prosthetic going on on the mountain, which is why we're all here at crazy o'clock. Are you feeling you can get some sleep? Yeah. What a big day. I'll get a bowl of hot water. We'll just take this down very slightly. Just around, around here. That's fantastic. and the first person in the chair was Amelia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fresh she came in at 5.30, 5.45, so we had to prep and get her stuff ready for her, and then the rest of the team came in after that. Oh, Kevin, hey, lovely, how are you? Oh, wow, well, welcome back. Oh, yeah, you too, babe. Hey, love, how are you? Good, very good. Good, good, nice to see you. Yeah. Hi, Amelia. This morning, I'm on Dragon Unit, and I was in at six to prep Hannah, who wears, although she wears a wimple, we still prep her hair for underneath. We've had Amelia, Grey Worm, Cersei, and Unella. We've had a full house today. It was nice that this morning we were all able to work off one bus, and that's rare. <laughs> so that was quite fun. 
for me, having all the ADs for each unit here is a nightmare because there's too many questions. Everyone's standing outside and you'll go to answer a question and you're forgetting who's on what unit and they're throwing everything left, right and centre at you out there. So I'm just going to stay in here, I think. My name is Naomi Liston and I'm the locations manager. I got in at five o'clock and basically my role is to have an overview of all the units in all the locations because we go to the most beautiful places in Northern Ireland. A lot of these beautiful places tend to be mountains or cider bays, places which are really difficult to get to, but it's good fun and, uh, it, you know, it's a good challenge. I suppose the fact that we've got three units in the actual paint hall today is quite a challenge. There's a lot of beeping from forklifts and stuff that we have to try and control, but thankfully we work very closely with the AD department and you know, we help each other out in, in controlling the noise to keep Ronan, the sound guy, happy. It's not easy. <laughs> it is very cold in the paint hall because there's no real insulation. So we are really first in to a location, make sure it's heated before the rest of the crew get in. There's a lot of manual labor involved, shall we say, but it's cheaper than the gym. My name is Mark Mylod. I joined the series last year for season five, where I directed episodes three and four, and they obviously didn't hate them too much because they invited me back. My day starts this morning with a 7.30 rehearsal. I tend to get in about half an hour before that. Came in, grabbed a cup of coffee, walked the set, just walk it through, get my thoughts together. I sit there, I look through my script. Sometimes everything that's planned goes out the window. This morning when I sat down and looked around the set, I did change one bit of blocking, blocking being how the actors move through the set. Slight adjustment to the staging in the script at the beginning because, of course, we took um, Peter and Natalie out to that lovely balcony down in Peniscola. Then we're ready, the actors come on and work with me on the set for about half an hour before the rest of the crew come on. He creeps through the spear, he hurriedly steps back and bows, the rest of the guys bow, and in comes Amelia. <laughs> We show it to them, we put down the marks, we talk about how we're going to shoot it and pretty much lay out the day's work. Jacob, um, could I ask you to be here please, mate? The process takes patience and really a lot of common sense just to go shot by shot and focus on that, but always looking ahead, particularly on a day like today when there's such a time crunch. All right, rehearsing again, guys. Here we go. This is Dragon Unit filming a scene in a dungeon with Yunella and Cersei and the Mountain. This is from episode 10. She's lying here. He comes. Cersei comes in here. This was Pike, and we changed a few things around and created a dungeon in the cellar of King's Landing. We reuse a lot of sets a lot of times, and this was a quick do-over. With this cell here, we have lights already around it, so we we'll just have to pre-light, get them set, tweak them a wee bit, have a look, see how Fabian feels about it, and then go from there. It's not making it feel like a spotlight. During the day, he'll be coming over just giving us pointers and tips of what he wants. And then once we get the camera and see the shot, then we can finish off tweaking. See what visual effects and uh, stunts are doing on this set. This used to be the set, and we tore it all down. White Walker unit. New, but fantastic. We are in a huge space filled with green screens. It's probably the second biggest green screen I've seen on this job. We are on cell one, two, three, four at the Payne Hall in Belfast, and we are shooting elements of the sept blowing up. 
We're running some stunts which are taking place at the time the set is exploded with tons of wildfire. We did the fire effects last week and this is literally citizens of King Landing being kind of blown off in different directions. This is not new ground for us. So basically the process of putting the mats out is about an hour and then we start off doing a bag test. So we have a canvas bag which weighs the same average weight as a performer. So then we test the rig with the bag so that if there is any issue with the rig, it's the canvas bag that takes the fall. What we're shooting today is probably half a second of each person and they'll all be comped in together so you'll have half a second of people taking off and then their bodies falling apart courtesy of visual effects all right well this is armory that we're coming into up oh, hiding in the back this is how we kill people Yeah, sons of the Harvey. Ah, okay. And then what is the half dagger for there? Uh, that's for when, you know, you'll do, do a cut where they're going to stab, and then the next cut is the... The dagger is in, to the blood. It's probably one of the more impressive workshops because all the stock is always here. It is an armory. You know, if there's a zombie invasion, you do well to come in here and gear yourself up. I work on all the rubber versions and plastic versions of all the different weapons. For example, this would be one of the metal swords that we make with a little dagger here uh, for cold hands. My name's Ashling. It's my first job out of college, so I'm delighted to be here. I helped make the bolt and shields. It was 100 of them to be made and made them in two weeks. It was pretty crazy, <laughs> but a lot of fun. This is the throwing arm of the catapult. <laughs> We have to fix the arm, there's a little bit of damage on it during the week. So once we get the arm done and finished, we're straight down to Banbridge and away we go again. We've got a scene this week. That's why we're panicking here at the moment to get it ready. <laughs> Try that, Steve, so you're gonna get a bit more of a drill out of that. Yes. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> My name is Helen Sloan, and I'm the stills photographer around here. OK, Trevor, can I have you in with the grey, please? My day was covering the two units, which are Dragon and Wolf. <laughs> Paul, you might be in my frame there. <laughs> We've just had a photo shoot with Lena, who's always great to have a shoot with, because she's a lot of fun. You ran into all that stuff. I'm down and I'm watching And later on, we have Halthor, who plays the mountain and uh, gonna need a step ladder for that. And that's what I've been up to today, in amongst a bit of photo editing and grading some stills and then uh, sending a hard drive off to New York. <laughs> very, very good. I think the hardest part of anyone's job on Game of Thrones is there just aren't enough hours in the day because we've got a lot to get through. But the rest of it's great. We're done. That's it. Yay! Thanks, guys. This is prop making. Oh my God, this is it. We're that's, almost done. Yeah, We're almost done. Schedule. That's a lovely schedule. One that's what we like to see. One page, no matter how big. What are you working on on our final days of so production? So we're just breaking down the drawing for the Citadel Library, where we've obviously had to replicate hundreds and hundreds of books, along with some dressing features. So we've been moulding books and casting them out to fill all of the shelves. Generally, everything has to go to the props painting department with Kevin. He will then sort of make things look real. And let's go into the paint shop and see if we can find anybody. Uh, <laughs> Books, the yeah, books, the Citadel the books. books. We have a Citadel library this year, and we have 15 or 20 bookshelves that are going to be used in that Samwell scene. Well, we started with some original books that we kind of damaged them a little bit to create some movement on the pages, and then we gave those to Gavin, and then he put them together and made a mold. So you've still got the back, that's a foam, hard plastic with all the detail in it. We just have to paint them all up. We have about 800 of these to do, so we've got to bear in mind time. Very busy year. Seems to get busier and busier every year, to be honest. Tell you what, 
at this stage of the year, it's all just a blur. <laughs> I'm in charge of putting all this stuff together and getting it out to the units and the crews, make sure it all works. We've got a candle gag for Aria. She swipes it, the end of the candle drops, and then blows out. First one's hot off the presses. Do you want to bring that in? First one's hot off the presses. Uh, and that's got a tiny little hole in it there. And if you look at the, the candle holder itself, we've got a little rig in there, which is a little unit, which just pulls a little bar away, that drops off, air comes past and blows the candle out. I'll go through like that. The bar will come up through the centre like that. When the thing goes down, that'll slide off. That won't help you. Well, obviously we're in Marine. Since. Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. We're in Marine. So now we're in B stage, visiting yes. Marine. Yes, we are. That's what we're doing. Danny makes her triumphant return. Mm -hmm. Getting ready for a badass yes, entrance. Yes. Trying to look angry, but I'm on Game of Thrones, so I'm happy. <laughs> so it's difficult. Here they are. These are the people who make Game of Thrones happen. <laughs> This is Jane, who's head of makeup, which is a no small feat. Glamorous appearance. This is Nicola, who does my face. I don't do anything. This is great. Great. This is Kirsten, who put this on. She put this on and dyed her own hair in, in the same colour. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's really hard because I've got dark hair. I've got dark hair. I don't look anything like this. And now I look like this. And there's a good couple of hours' work that goes into that. And this is Kate makeup, more amazing makeup. Hello. <laughs> Kate, where's my coffee? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to give away any secrets. <laughs> what? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> fixing the telly. Sorry. Hello, sorry. Hi, baby. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> So we're spending most of the day here. Yeah, we have a little scene with Olena back in King's Landing. So we're in two worlds today, stage A and B, which is our newer stages, which are nice and toasty, mm -hmm. not cold like the paint hall. Yeah. We don't see our breath on these stages. <laughs> yeah. Make her less blue. <laughs> Today we're doing a scene with uh, Grey Worm, Tyrion and Sande. Our job on set is to capture any um, actuality and dialogue and sound effects that happen while we're doing a scene. We will not go to the beach. If we go to the beach, the masters will take the pyramid. We'll just cover that all day, make sure everything's clean, make sure we've got all the dialogue, all the words are there. I listen to Grey Worm throughout the day and just make sure that the accent's not too strong and that the accent is following the storyline. The pyramid is the only place in the city we can defend. We stay here. We've seen him in other episodes learning English, but now we get to see him as a, as a character who's very articulate. Today we're doing General Leighton. We've got two sets today, so at the moment we're just lighting wall sconces in one and creating atmosphere. So there'll be like a lot of wind work and a lot of flames on the walls. My job on Game of Thrones is a video operator. If they need to see back any of the previous takes quickly, then I can play back for the director, for producers, or for anyone who needs the continuity from previous takes and previous setups and things like that. As we speak now, the unit's just moved over to the next stage where we're setting up for part of a scene with Diana Rigg where her character comes out and finds that Marjorie, her beloved granddaughter, has not completely turned to the dark side. So there is hope for her in that moment. And there's probably about three shots to grab before we wrap on that today. <laughs> We're in the paint hall today, which is very cold, although it's actually warmer outside than it is in the paint hall. We're filming um, a scene where the scepter, Unella, finally gets her comeuppance. We're drowning a lady, waterboarding, water torture. 
with wine. It'll be great. Basically, what I'll be doing is for each cut, I'll obviously have to reset the levels of the, you know, the wines, so the fake wines that we're using as, as cranberry juice at the minute. For the glass, then we would obviously have to make, keep it in level with that. And then for the jug, got to be level for the jug as well. So keep it pretty precise, you know. We're at the paint hall today. We've been on location for about a month now, and we're just getting everything back in, getting everything sorted. It's our time to sort of gather and clean everything, get ready to go out again, because we're out again tomorrow. With all these big, massive, epic battle scenes and stuff we've been doing, it's been tough on the equipment, so you've got to keep it clean. I'm the trainee group for Dragon Unit. We're in charge of camera movement, camera placement, stuff like that. But as a trainee, I'm just supporting the, the main groups. There's two of them in there at the minute. So how long does it take them to put them in the armor? About five minutes. Five minutes. There's two of us. Yeah. And an apple box. <laughs> Half those been in for a couple of hours already. Prosthetics takes a lot longer than anything else does. Yeah. Ten minutes for the girls on this one for the armor and it's ready to go. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, it's really cool, man. Step this way, sir. It's never the same day at the paint hall. You can come here and have a completely different day every day of the week for the whole year. You, you'll never do the same thing twice. And then when you get to here, that's when she'll see you for the first time. Oh, I don't understand. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, darling. Here we go. We're ready. Stand by. Stand by with Mark. Action. Yeah. This is Sir Gregor Pagain. We've got the wonderful Hannah on the table doing a fantastic yeah. scream, I have to say. She's got a great kind of yeah. set of vocal equipment and she knows exactly yeah. how to use it. Shame. I'm Ryan Stewart and I'm a stunt performer. Today, the process wasn't too bad. It's really just making sure we harnessed up and we got our pads on. This is all stuff that we, we do a fair bit of, so we know what to expect. We have a harness that goes underneath the costume, which has got 52 different points on it to attach the wires. We'll have the wires connected on different parts of our bodies. We'll have them sometimes wrapped between your legs, which is going to make you somersault. Or we'll have them wrapped around your body, which is going to make you barrel roll a bit more. We'll just have them on your back to make it more of a straight pull. We've got the stunties on a rig here. They're getting uh, whipped up into the ceiling, and we're just pushing some air on the clothes, making it look a little bit more exciting when they get blown up there. I've been in front of it before. It's not like, it's not the most pleasant experience. Ah, it's cool, it's fun. Sometimes you feel like you, you're sort of leaving your mind behind and then you sort of catch up to yourself and a few seconds later. Almost always in the last month of production, we spend a tremendous amount of time shooting all the little pieces that we need to complete our visual effects. It's a very short little piece. Maybe the blow-up is a, a second, second and a half, um, but it starts inside the set and then translates outside to various parts of the building blowing up. To sell the whole story, you have to actually have real people that the visual effects department can then turn into disintegrating people. We had um, all of our actors being blown with wind and we had some of the stunt guys falling over, and from that we gauge what elements we want to shoot to lay into those shots to make them more dynamic. I'm the video playback operator on Dragon Unit. Basically, my job is to record everything that the cameras are recording um, and to display it on monitors all over set for the entire crew. 
the VFX unit tend to rely on the video playback operator quite heavily. So basically what I can do is, if we record something, say, a few weeks ago, and then like today, we're recording the stunt work, I then overlay both of these together to make sure that all the timings are right, just to make sure that when they go to post, that everything's gonna work and everything fits. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That is a wrap. Thank you, please, guys. Well done. Thank you very much. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> Single, ready to mingle. Looking for a good time. Tonight, we fully load everything up, and then the whole process starts again tomorrow. We'll go to tomb and unload the trucks, and a new day on Game of Thrones will begin. Game of Thrones gave me my start in the film industry, and since then I've been all over the world because of it, so I'm very grateful. Not all the jobs allow you to see your work sort of lauded all around the world. You could say I was there, and I remember how hard that day was, but look what happened. Very cool. Game of Thrones has become a massive part of my life, and it's just great to be able to look back many years to come and say I was part of that. It totally changed my life for the better, from sculpting to to the, to the boss to make a fun of me. <laughs> it's just really enjoyable. I mean, you get to see things that you wouldn't see on any other show, on any other film, in fact. I will continuously come back. I'm just very loyal and very proud to have my name on the credits. When I started reading the books, I'd never dreamed of be working on a TV production of those books. So for me, personally, it's been quite a journey and quite an experience. I look at what we get to do. I look at the 3D creatures. You look at the spectacular set extensions. You get to travel to all these fabulous countries. Like many people on the show, I think I might have the best job on Earth.